So we're here today to talk, um, we, should, we should be talking about a budget, but maybe just as importantly, uh, we're here to talk about the nomination of Judge Rowan Wilson to be the Chief Judge of the highest court here in New York. And uh, I'm going to open up some with some remarks here on what I think, what I saw today. I want to thank our members of the Judiciary Committee who are here today. I want to thank our ranker, Senator Palumbo. I want to thank Senator Martins, Senator Cantonary Fitzpatrick, Senator Rhodes, as well as Senator Lanza um, for their professionalism, for their questions, and for their focus in sharp contrast to what we saw from our colleagues in the Democratic Conference. You know, this is the next chapter, I guess the latest chapter in this saga that started with Justice Hector LaSalle's nomination and then the absolute really travesty as to how he was treated by the Senate Democrats to include his Judiciary Committee hearing. And then obviously he sat for weeks because they refused to give him a vote even though he was constitutionally, and the people of New York were constitutionally owed that vote. And thanks to Senator Palumbo in our conference and the lawsuit that we filed, we were able to force that vote and give Judge LaSalle an up or down vote. Now, if you remember at that time, my colleagues across the aisle said that they, they, they voted to not move Judge LaSalle's nomination. Senator Hoyleman, the chair of the committee, said that Judge LaSalle was unqualified because he had once run with the conservative line. That was a disqualifier to be chief judge in Senator Hoyleman's opinion. They were unhappy with a couple of rulings, including to protect the First Amendment. Apparently that was a disqualifier for the Senate Democrats. But apparently, What's not a disqualifier is letting a convicted rapist having that conviction overturned. That's not a disqualifier for Senate Democrats, for Senator Hoyleman. They're more comfortable with a judge who ruled to overturn a, con a rapist conviction. They're more comfortable with a judge who thought that elephants had the right to petition for their release, just as you or I might, than they were with supporting Judge LaSalle, whose only, who's only disqualifier apparently was that he was not a far left activist judge. Um, so we have a, a nominee for new nominee for chief judge. Uh, I, I think you heard from our members in the Judiciary Committee from the questions they asked, which were pointed, which were direct. Those are going to be the same concerns that our conference as a whole, I believe, will have. We have not conferenced Judge Wilson at this point um, with the whole Republican conference. We certainly will. Uh, but I thought that our judiciary members today uh, did a fantastic job um, questioning Judge Wilson and highlighting real problems. You know, I know it was announced today, or at least it's being reported by some, that there's a deal on bail to remove least restrictive means from violent felonies. Now, I'm not going to get too far afield on a report. Nothing against all of you folks, but until I see something concrete, I'll comment on that. But I, I, I would caution you that I think it's interesting that on that day that they're announcing a bail deal, they're advancing a judge nominated by the governor, being advanced by Senate Democrats, who clearly feels that he would rather have a convicted rapist walking free than behind bars where he belongs. So whatever deal they're striking on bail to make the public more safe, at the exact same time, they're putting in as the top of the New York State court system someone who I think is arguably the most dangerous from a thinking standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, from a legal standpoint, 
the most dangerous chief judge that we've seen maybe ever, certainly in a very long time.